Welcome to video two. Today we're going to be looking at the powers given to the states under this whole federalism um, umbrella that we have in the United States. So first of all, uh, the Tenth Amendment, we've talked about this amendment many times before in class, but just as a refresher, the Tenth Amendment is the amendment that reserves powers to the states. So it saves certain things for the states to be able to do, okay? The Tenth Amendment tells us that powers that are not delegated or given to the federal government by the Constitution and powers that are not prohibited by the Constitution to the states are reserved to the states, okay? So we call this the Reserved Powers Amendment. Sometimes we call it the States Rights Amendment. And I want you to remember, you don't have to write this down, but just remember that the Tenth Amendment was added to the Constitution to make the federal, the anti-federalists happy because they were freaked out that the Constitution was going to take away rights of the states. So something else that states have under the Constitution are things called police powers, okay? So according to our principle of federalism, states have the authority to create laws within their state and also promote the general welfare, so pass laws that are going to um, protect citizens, uh, to keep us safe, dealing with the health of the citizens, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, within their state. So anything that goes on within the state, states have a responsibility to take care of. Okay, so next we want to look at some concurrent powers, and we've talked about this before. Concurrent powers are things that both the federal government and the state government have, okay? So if we were to draw a Venn diagram, the concurrent powers are going to be the stuff in the middle, okay? So three examples of concurrent powers are the ability to tax within your, your jurisdiction. Remember that word jurisdiction means your area of influence or authority, okay? So a state can tax within the state. The federal government can tax within the country, okay? They can also create courts within their jurisdiction. So the state of Missouri can create Missouri state courts and the United States can create federal courts. We also have the ability to pass and enforce laws, once again, within their jurisdiction. So the United States can pass federal laws for the entire country. The state of Missouri can pass state laws only for Missouri. And there are also some things that the states cannot do. States cannot create their own currency. We, ex we saw firsthand how that worked out with the Articles of Confederation. It didn't work very well. States cannot tax a federal agency. That's one of the things that was at the center of the McCulloch v. Maryland case. A state cannot tax a federal institution. They cannot create laws that violate the Constitution. So if a state creates a law that directly violates the federal Constitution, then that state law cannot stand. States can also not enter into treaties. And prior to the Constitution, there are some examples of states trying to enter treaties with other countries. That's not how it works in the United States. They also cannot establish tariffs, so they cannot establish that tax on imported goods. There are a few things that the federal government cannot do as well. The federal government cannot favor one state over another when regulating trade, so they can't say, oh, Missouri, you're going to get a better end of this bargain than Illinois because you're Missouri. Can't do that. Uh, they also can't pass ex post facto laws, and that's a fun word. Um, ex post facto means after the fact. So if you, uh, like, for example, Congress can't pass a law that makes something illegal and then punish you for it when what you did was not a crime. And we'll talk more about that in class. So they can't pass ex post facto laws. They also cannot pass bills of attainder. And bills of attainder are things, are laws that would basically punish a group of people for doing something without giving them a trial. OK, so you've got to have a trial if you're going to be punished for a crime. OK, and with that, I will stop. If you guys have any questions, let me know.